Hello everyone, welcome to Philosophy Roulette. This is number 59, where we read some philosophy papers on the internet live and give you reactions. It's awesome. Um, I just realized I should probably not even be using fill papers. I should be using like fill archive, which is just the, all the papers that fill papers has, just without all the other stuff that it doesn't have. So I'm gonna think about that. I, just, I was like, you know, wouldn't it be nice if I could just filter by what Phil Papers has and then I don't even have to worry about like what I click on? But you know what, not yet. I have to think about exactly how to make that more fun. That'd be too easy just to pick the top one at the heap. But uh, so let's see what we got for you. New journal articles today, journal of medical ethics. Let's see, journal of medical ethics, anything. Short. Hmm, let's see what we got. Ooh, four pages. Questionable benefits and unavoidable personal beliefs. Defending conscientious objection for abortion. <coughs> Let's go see if it's here. I mean, with four downloads, I suspect it isn't, but we'll find out. Yeah, log in. I don't think so. All these short papers. I don't know if I believe this. Fetus, oh, I bet it's a, one of these double uh, columned, really small uh, font things. Let's see what we got. Yeah, 19 pages. Uh, I'm not in the mood for reading that much at the moment. Let's get something a little shorter. And see, this is only says it's like five pages here or six pages. So, that's the problem. They, some journals have very small typefaces. And... Ooh, nihilism and information technology. Let's see what we got. Oh, wow. That's very long. Shouldn't just click on things. Phenomenology, humanity, and sciences. Yeah, these are kind of long. Oh, I don't have that in journal. Thought. I can handle thought. My uh, two favorite journals, analysis and thought. Let's see if they have something new. Next issue. How to build thought. Oh no. Well, let's see. We did how to build a thought, I believe. All right. So we're gonna do Whitehead's principle. Cool beans. All right. So Whitehead's principle by Ben Blumson. I'm all excited now. If you're ever uh, here live, which are some people sometimes, you can uh, grab a the paper by typing exclamation point paper in uh, the chat. And uh, that will do it. Cool. 19 pages. Oh my god, the long one for thought though. All right. Nineteen pages, but it's a uh, LaTeX document. Nice, big old white space on the sides, double spaced. Awesome. Okie dokie. So, Whitehead's principle. Here we go. Some things are connected and others are not. Right now, I'm connected to my chair. I'm not connected. What do you mean connected to your chair? I mean, I'm sitting on it, and I'm not. Con oh, all right. When I stand up, my chair and I will be disconnected. Well, you're not going to be touching anymore. I don't know what you mean by connected. The oceans are not are connected to Earth since they lie on its surface, but the moon is not since it orbits in space. But it's connected via 
gravitational pull. Okay. The northern hemisphere is connected to the southern hem hemisphere since they meet at the equator. In contrast, the nor north temperate zone is not connected to the south temperate zone since they are separate separated by the tropics. Or are they connected by the tropics? I don't know. Many more specific examples are easy to find. Yeah, um... I'm already confused. <laughs> awesome. But when, in general, are two things connected? Intuitive and intuitive answer to this question is Whitehead's principle, according to which two things are connected if and only if there's something which overlaps both of them, and which is such that every part of it overlaps one of them. Okay, so we've got some overlap principle. So according to Whitehead's principle, Europe and Asia, for example, are connected because Russia overlaps both Europe and Asia, and because every part of Russia overlaps Europe and overlaps Asia. Oh, we've got a, a boundary uh, theory here. Okay, this is what we're doing. I actually put some time into working on uh, philosophy of place at, at different points. And over, yeah, I've worked on philosophy of place a little itty teeny bit. It's a fun topic. So we've got a, a philosophy of place paper. This is exciting. Intuitive as it is, you see, this is why I'm already grumpy is because I, I have opinions already about the topic. Intuitively as it is, Whitehead's principle is incompatible with the possibility of scattered objects, or in other words, things which are not self-connected. Um, again, uh, gravity. How, how do you do uh, action at a distance? Because things can be gravitationally uh, connected, but it's action at a distance. I mean, all right. Keep going. New Zealand, for example, is divided into two disconnected parts, the North Island and the Southern, the South Island. Nevertheless, there is something which overlaps both the North Island and the South Island, and every part of which overlaps either the North Island or South Island, namely New Zealand itself. So Whitehead's principle falsely implies that North and South Islands are connected after all. If you say so. This suggests that what seems intuitive about Whitehead's principle might be captured by Whitehead's rectified principle, according to which a pair of individuals is connected if and only if there is something self-connected which overlaps both of them, and every part of which overlaps one of them. So according to Whitehead's rectified principle, Europe and Asia, for example, are connected because R mainland Russia is self-connected, mainland Russia overlaps both Europe and Asia, and every part of mainland Russia overlaps either Europe or Asia. Roberto Casadi and Arkel Varzi have presented a counterexample to Whitehead's rectified principle inspired by the Cantor set, the Cantor Bar, when you can get a beer at the Cantor Bar, whether which consists of an individual which has no self-connected parts or in, is entirely scattered. I wonder what that means. As we explain in detail, although I've met Arkel Varzi before, he's smart, so I'm sure it makes sense somewhere. As we explain in detail in section 7, the Cantor bar presupposes not only the possibility that scattered objects, but also the possibility of gunk or individuals which are not composed of any atoms. The complexity of the example naturally raises the question of whether Whitehead's rectified principle is provable in the context of atomism. This paper presents a very simple, albeit counterintuitive, atomistic countermount to show that it is not. We conclude that the truth of Whitehead's rectified principle is logically independent from the question of atomism. Both atomistic and atomless muriologies are consistent with the acceptance or rejection of Whitehead's rectified principle. <coughs> oh, we're going to muriology. I was hoping for like philosophy of place. That'd be like cool. But muriology is cool too. The difficulties for Whitehead's principle are starkest in classical extinctional muriology. Roughly speaking, classical extinctional muriology is the combination of two theses: extinctionalism, according to which no two no things composed more, according to which no things composed more than one compose more than one thing, and universalism, according to which all things compose at least one thing. In particular, universalism is in consonant with Whitehead's principle because, as we shall see, they jointly entail that everything is connected to everything else, thus trivializing the relation of connection. To be more precise, we, can fo we follow Cassati and Varzi in axiomatizing classical extinction muriology with a simple primitive relation P, where P, X, Y is interpreted as meaning that X is an improper part of Y. It is assumed that parthood is reflexive, anti-symmetric, and transitive. PXX, so X reflects to X. PXY and PYX implies that X equals Y and anti-symmetric. PXY and PYZ transitive implies that. Okay. Then a 
a pair of individuals are defined as overlapping if and only if there is something on which is a part of both of them. So overlap, x, y, defined as there exists some z such as pzx and pzy. So Egypt overlaps. Asia, for example, because Sinai is part of Egypt and part of Asia. So, so, so still at the place. Maybe I can be happy. With the definition of overlap in hand, we can state the axiom of strong supplementation according to which if something is not part of another, some part of the latter does not overlap the former. It's not the case. It's not PYX, in, uh, then, if not PYX, then there exists some Z such that PZX and not overlaps ZY. So since sign, since Egypt is not, is not, Egypt is not part of Africa, for example, there is some part of Egypt specifically Sinai, which does not overlap Africa. Together with anti-symmetry, strong supplementation captures the extensionalist aspect of classical extensional muriology. Egypt is not part of Africa? Hmm, okay. The universalist aspect of classical extensional muriology is captured by the axiom schema of fusion, according to which for any satisfied predicate, there is something which overlaps all and only the things which satisfy the predicate. So there's fusion, there exists some phi, if there exists some phi x, there exists some x, y of it, for all y that overlaps y x implies that if and only if uh, there is some z, phi z, and overlaps. So <coughs> if y overlaps x, then there's something that overlaps all and only things which overlap the thing. Since, yeah, since there is an ocean, for example, there is something which overlaps all and only things which overlap the ocean, an ocean. The, then the fusion or general sum of things which satisfy a predicate, which is part in the context of extensionalism, is defined as the thing which overlaps all and only things which satisfy the predicate. All right, so we can just, I'll take their word for it that this is what they call general sum. The overlap the ocean, for example, is the, the thing which overlaps all and only things which overlap an ocean. Further definitions of classical extensional muriology will be introduced as we need them. <coughs> With these definitions in hand, Whitehead's original principle, according to which a pair of individuals is connected if and only if there is something which overlaps both of them, and every part which, of which overlaps one of them, can be stated using CXY to mean X is connected to Y. Uh, X is connected to Y, all right, so they all are overlapping for whatever it is. Um, PW, the parthood, implies that they're one of it's overlapping something. So according to Whitehead's principle, Asia is connected to Africa, for example, because Egypt overlaps Africa, Egypt overlaps Asia, and every part of Egypt overlaps Africa or Asia. Whitehead's principle has the advantage that if it were true, it would provide a reductive analysis of connecting of connection in pure muriological terms. In particular, Whitehead's principle offers an analysis of connection in terms of just parthood and overlap, which is itself defined in terms of parthood. Parthood. So if Whitehead's principle is true, there would be no mystery about when two things are connected, or at least any mystery about when two things are connected would reduce to the two questions about whether one thing is a part of another. This is a considerable theoretical advantage. However, this con in the context of classical extensional muriology, Whitehead's principle is completely unacceptable since it entails that everything is connected to everything else. To see why, define the sum of two individuals as the individual which overlaps all and only individuals which overlap the first or overlap the second. So we've got to take the sum. The sum of Europe and Asia, for example, is Eurasia. The individual which overlaps all and only things which overlap Europe or overlap Asia. In classical extensional muriology, it follows by substitution z equals x or z equals y for phi of z, a psi of z, excuse me, in the fusion schema that every pair of individuals has a sum, which is unique in the context of extensionalism. <coughs> okay, so you add that those things together. Since Europe, for example, is identical to Europe or identical to Asia, it follows from the fusion that there's something specifically Eurasia, which overlaps all and only things which overlap Europe or overlap Asia. Sure. The Whitehead's principle is trivial in classical extensional muriology because it, its right-hand side is always satisfied. The sum of x plus y overlaps x and overlaps y, and every part of x plus y overlaps x or overlaps y. Consider, for example, India and Australia. According to classical extensional muriology, India and Australia have some. Indo-Australia... Australia... Australia. Indo-Australia overlaps India, and Indo-Australia overlaps Australia. 
Moreover, every part of in Indo-Australia overlaps India or overlaps Australia. So according to Whitehead's principle, it follows that India is connected to Australia. To put the problem in another way, we note, we note in the introduction that Whitehead's principle is incompatible with the existence of scattered objects, but classical extensional meteorology exacerbates this problem because it entails that whenever two individuals are not connected, their sum is scattered a scattered object. So unless all individuals are connected, classical extensional meteorology entails that there are scattered objects. So unless all individuals are connected, classical extensional meteorology is incompatible with Whitehead's principle. You know, it's like... I don't know what you mean by connected at all here. I mean, there's lots of ways to connect things. Like, you mean physically touching. Like, I can feel this. Like, when I put, um, I can feel sitting on my chair. Like, but that's like my feeling about, I feel it. Like, I can, like, there's a pressure that I feel. Um, but like, that is a very limited way of talking about connection. I mean, like, Europe and Asia do not feel pressure, I don't think. I mean, that doesn't make sense to say that, like, the two things are feeling pressure and that, therefore, they're connected. It's like, I don't really know what that means. Okay. Anywho, I'm sure these people have plenty of discussion on the topic. Classical extinction myriotopology. Gotta love philosophers with their terms. Myriotopology. The problem just raised with Whitehead's principle is that where... Whereas Russia and Egypt are self-connected, Indo-Australia is scattered. So the fact that Indo-Australia overlaps both India and Australia does nothing to connect them. But what is the difference between India individuals which are self-connected, like mainland Australia, and individuals which are scattered, like Indo Indonesia, like the Indonesian archipelago? This question cannot be answered in muriological terms alone, but can be answered by introducing connection as an additional primitive. In particular, classical extensional meriotopology is the theory which extends classical extension, extensional meriology with an additional primitive relation C, where CXY is interpreted as meaning C is connected to Y and is governed by the following axioms. Reflexive, symmetric, and mon monotonicity. So monotonicity is for if P is parthood of XY, then for any Z, uh, if Z is, part, is connected to X and Z is connected to Y. So... Here, monotonicity is responsible for capturing the relation between parthood and connection. Yep. With connection adopted as an additional self-primitive, additional primitive self-connection can be defined in terms of connection and summation. Self-connection, okay. According to this definition, an individual is self-connected if and only if for every way of partitioning it into a sum, the, sum, the summons are connected. <laughs> so, yeah. If you can only break it up into... Yeah, everything has to be a proper part of itself, or if it's not, it will fail self-connection. New Zealand, for example, is not self-connected, according to this definition, because New Zealand is the sum of the South Island and North Island, but the South Island and North Island can, are not connected. With the distinction between self-connected and scattered individuals in hand, it appears that Whitehead's principle can be corrected. In particular, according to Whitehead's rectified principle, a pair of individuals is connected if and only if there is something self-connected which overlaps both of them, and such that every part of it overlaps. Okay, so we got more formulas. So Russia is connected to Asia, for example, not only because mainland Russia overlaps Europe, mainland Russia overlaps Asia, and every part of mainland Russia overlaps Europe or Asia, but also because mainland Russia is self-connected. Whitehead's rectified principle, unlike his predecessor, cannot serve as a reductive analysis of connection in purely muriological terms, since it analyzes connection partly in terms of self-connection, which is not purely muriological, since itself is itself derived in terms of connection. Nevertheless, if Whitehead's rectified principle were true, it could still provide a reciprocal analysis of connection, where connection and self-connection are both an analy analyzed in terms of each other. So it could still provide a partial illumination on the question of when two things are connected. Moreover, the right-to-left direction of Whitehead's rectified principle is a theorem of classical extensional meritopology. To see why, define the product of two overlapping individuals as the individual all and only is as the individual all and only parts of which are both which are part of both of them. So you got this product and then Okay, so if it's part, then you got lots of parts for some iota, I guess. Sinai, for example, is the product of Asia in Asia, since it, since something is part of Sinai, if and only if it is part of Egypt and part of Asia. 
Why is this P over here capital? I don't know. In classical extinction only rheology, every pair of overlapping individuals has a product, which is unique in the context of extinctionalism. Okay, product. <coughs> product closure. Since Malaysia overlaps Borneo, for example, there's something, namely East Malaysia, and all and only parts of which are part of Malaysia and part of Borneo. Moreover, in classical extinction homeology, if an individual overlaps two others, then it then its product distributes over their sum. Okay, so take their word for it that this formula is right. Since Turkey overlaps Europe and Asia, for example, the product of Turkey with Eurasia is the sum of the product of Turkey with Europe and the product of Turkey with Asia. Finally, the right to left direction of white, uh, Whitehead's rectified principle follows from the definition from the definition of self-connected, self-connection, distributivity, and monotonicity. All right, and we got a proof. Um, I'm going to skip the proof. However, as we will see, the left-to-right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle is not provable, even in a theory stronger than classical extensional myriad topology. All right, closure conditions. Kasadi and Varzi favor stronger theory they call classical extensional mirror topology with closure conditions, abbreviated GEMTC, which adds to classical extensional mirror topology axiom inspired by the Kuratowski closure axioms of mathematical topology. In order to state these conditions, these conditions we say that something is an internal part of another if and only if the former is part of the latter and everything connected to the former overlaps the latter. Okay, internal parts, yeah. So internal part is defined as parthood and it's uh, connected and overlaps. Okay. Bolivia, for example, is an internal part of South America since Bolivia is part of South America and everywhere connected to Bolivia overlaps South America. Brazil, on the other hand, is not an internal part of South America since the Pacific is connected to Brazil but does not overlap South America. In terms of internal parthood, the interior of an individual can be defined as the general sum of its internal parts. Suppose that the countries of South America are its atomic parts, for example, then the interior part of in the interior of South America is the sum of Bolivia and Paraguay. With these definitions in hand, we can define GM, GEMTC as a theory which extends classical extensional and myriad topology, myriad, myriad with the following axioms: inclusion, idempotence, product. GEMTC, according to Kasadi and Varzi, may be considered the archetype of a myriological theory. Nevertheless, as we shall see in the next two sections, the axioms of GEMTC are still too weak to entail Whitehead's principle. The Cantor Bar. In order to show the, that the left-to-right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle is not a theory of GEMTC, Kasadi and Varzi give as a counterexample the Cantor Bar, which they describe as follows. The creation of the Cantor Bar. The first step is to remove the middle and third, the middle third of a self-connected bar. The next step is to remove the middle of each of the remaining bars. Remain, repeating this over and over again creates a scattered object with no self-connected parts. Okay, so you've got a Sierpinski triangle just in, on a two-dimensional sort of thing. You just keep taking one third out of the middle. And so, yeah, and so instead of like there being a connection along the edge of the triangle, you've just got, since it's a two-dimensional thing, you just keep, you've got a, what is it, like the trace of the uh, bar. <sighs> since there's no self-connected parts, the canter bar is a counterexample to the left to right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle. As Kasadi and Varzi write, if X has no self-connected parts, then there may be things to which X is connected, that, for example, to itself, without there being any self-connected Z doing the job required by Whitehead's principle. Um, I mean, it's not connected on, the, like, in terms of, like, drawing on the page, but, I mean, it's mathematically defined in that sense. The relation of where the parts are to each other are connected via mathematical principles. So, I mean, depending on, again, how arbitrary you want to be with your understanding of what counts as a connection. The problem is that although the candy bar is connected with itself, the only thing which overlaps the candy bar and which all parts which overlap it are part of, but none of these are self-connected. Notice that in order to be individual with no self-connected parts, the candy bar must be composed of gunk, or in other words, must have no atoms as parts. To see this, define an atom as an individual which has no parts other than itself. 
Fundamental physical powers, for example, are atoms under this definition, since fundamental physical powers, particles have no parts other than themselves. Then classical existential material topology follows that all atoms are self-connected. Proof, not going to read proofs. So in order to be a counterexample to Whitehead's rectified principle, no atoms can be part of the Cantor bar. Okay, so I have to take their word for it on the proofs, but since the atoms fail on these um, self-connectedness uh, axioms, um, atoms fail, which is kind of interesting. Okay, that's fine. So the example of the Cantor bar raises the question of whether the left to right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle is provable from an additional axiom according to which everything is composed of atoms. So we've got atoms. For all things x, there exists some y that atom is y, there exists some y that and y is a part of x. So everything is composed of um, some sort of atom. This axiom rule this axiom would rule out the Cantor bar, for example, since no part of the Cantor bar, the Cantor bar is an atom. It's a mathematical construct, I guess, but whatever. But there is a very simple counter model to show that even under the assumption of atomism, classical existential mirror topology does not entail the left to right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle. Suppose everything is composed of just four atoms, A, B, C, D, none of which are connected to each other. And suppose that A plus D is connected to B plus C, and that no other individuals are connected without overlapping. In this model, everything has its atoms amongst its interior parts. Since So since everything is the general sum of its atoms, everything is its own interior. So the axioms of GEMTC are satisfied. However, in this model, nothing is self-connected except the four atoms. Since because the atoms aren't connected to anything except themselves, everything else may be partitioned into a sum in which one summoned is an atom to which the other summoned is not connected and none of the four atoms overlap both A, both A plus D and B plus C, so there's nothing self-connected to satisfy the right-hand side of Whitehead's rectified principle. Hence, Whitehead's rectified principle is not a theme of classical existential mirror topology with closure conditions, even under the assumption of atomism. Okay, so if you can move your little atoms around in a way that they're not exactly all overlapping and doing these things, then I'll take their word for it. To make the counter mal more intuitive, imagine, for example, that a and C and protons, whereas B and D are electrons, so that A plus B and C plus D are hydrogen atoms in the chemical sense, which are connected to form H2 molecule, which we think of in terms of chemical bonding rather than contact. Then although the two hydrogen atoms are connected, there is nothing self-connected which overlap both of them, and so, according to the example, Whitehead's rectified principle is false. Yeah, so you've got these two little things and they're connected, and you've got a hydrogen atom there, and um... Hydrogen, yeah, molecule, and, uh, okay, but, like, uh, the way it's broken up doesn't allow you to call it overlap, so you can't do muriology. <coughs> A striking feature of the atomic counter model is that A plus D is connected to B plus C without being connected to B or connected to C. Yeah, it's like, you can connect the, this, uh, sum without, you can connect a sum without connecting the individual parts. Like with B plus C is connected to A plus D without being connected to A or connected to D. So one might consider adding to Muriel topology an axiom according to which if an individual is connected to a complex and is connected to a proper part of the complex. To be connected to Australia, for example, a region must be connected to a, an Australian state or territory. The number of individuals, if the number of individuals were finite, then this axiom would entail the left to right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle. Since for any two complex individuals which are connected, we could keep applying the axiom until we reached two atoms which are connected to each other. The sum of these atoms would be self-connected and every part of it would overlap would overlap one of the original two individuals and so it would satisfy the left the right side of the rectified principle. However, there are counter models in which the number of individuals is infinite. Suppose for, suppose, for example, that there are countably many atoms, and so continuum many individuals in total. And suppose two individuals are connected, if and only if either they overlap or else they are composed of infinitely many atoms. In this model, only atoms are self-connected, since any uh, other individual may be partitioned into a sum in which one summoned is an atom, to which the other summoned is not connected. So although 28 is satisfied, the left to right direction of Whitehead's principle is not, since 
disjoint individuals composed of infinitely many atoms are connected, but not overlapping by anything self-connected. A stronger axiom would require that if two individuals are connected, then ha they have atomic parts which are themselves connected. This axiom would entail the right-to-left direction of Whitehead's rectified principle. Suppose Z is connected to Y. Then it follows there exists some atoms Z and V such that Z is part of X, V is part of Y, and Z and V are connected. Then Z sum V satisfies the right-hand right -hand side of Whitehead's rectified principle. Notice that axiom 29 is very strong since it entails atomism. You got a lot of, yeah, there exists atomism up there. For letting X and Y be the same, the consequent of 29 follows from reflexivity of connection, and so it follows that in order to be connected to itself, every individual must have an atom as a part as, atom, as atomism requires. Thus, axiom 29 rules out not only the example of the canter bar as it is required to do in order to entail the left to right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle, but rules out the possibility of gunk altogether. Moreover, even under the assumption of atomism, 29 is stronger than it needs to be in order to entail the left to right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle. It entails, for example, that the closed interval 0 to 1 cannot be cannot be connected to the open interval 1 to 2 since no point in 0 to 1 closed is connected to any point in 1 to 2 open. But the connection of 0 to 1 to 1 to 2 is not a counterexample to the left to right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle since, for example, it's satisfied by the internal, by the interval 0.9 to 1.1. Okay, yeah. Uh, I should learn some more uh, muriology. There's even an axiom which can be added to classical extinction, extinctional muriotopology that ex entails the left to right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle, but which does not entail anything which the left to right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle does not entail. The most obvious answer is the left to right direction of the principle itself. Gassati and Varzi call the muriotopology reached by adding axiom 30 to a muriotopology is Whiteheadian white extinction. As it must as it must in order to exclude the counter model of the candor bar, the principle entails that there is no scattered gunk, or in other words, that everything has a self-connected part. So self-connection here. Proof. We'll take their word for it. The atomic model the atomic counter model about above already shown has already shown that the converse is not the case, and the left to right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle does not follow from 31, the inexistence of scattered gunk. But since that counter model is atomic, one naturally wonders whether 31 does entail the left to right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle under the assumption of atomlessness, according to which everything has a part other than itself. This axiom of 32 would rule out the atomic counter model, since the atoms that the counter model do not have any parts other than themselves. For an atomless, atomless counter model to the entailment from 31 to the left to right direction, for an atomless counter model to the entailment from 31 to the left to right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle, imagine there are just four pizzas, every slice of which may be sliced in half, but only along the radii of the pizza. Well, that's a good law. You shouldn't be slicing pizza other ways. So that every slice is connected to all the other slices of the same pizza at the pizza center. Atomlessness is satisfied because every slice of pizza may be itself sliced in half, but 31 also satisfies since every slice of pizza is self-centered and everything, everything has a slice of pizza as a part. N now, in order to complete the counter model, imagine that the four pizzas play the role of the four atoms in the simple atomic counter model. In other words, imagine that none of the pizzas are connected to each other, but contrary to 28, the sum of the first two pizzas is connected to the sum of the second two pizzas. Okay, then although the two pizza sums are connected, nothing which overlaps, both of them is self-connected, and so there is nothing to satisfy the left to right direction of Whitehead's rectified principle. Alright, so you've got like these things that are like infinitely connected at some sort of a topological like uh, center point. But then when you start adding them to the other things, they do not, are all, nothing that overlaps them is self-connected because the the overlap can't be in that point also, I guess. <laughs> okay, this is a more uh, mathematically sophisticated than I was prepared for, but that's kind of exciting just the same. You know, what would have been, I'm always a, uh, I, I, I like 
pictures in philosophy. I think they could have done well if they just had some like simple pictures to show all their overlaps in this, and it would have been kind of fun. Um, this hell had lots of um, might have been helpful by some uh, mathematical diagrams. Or not mathematical, meriological, meriotopological diagrams. But okay, that was kind of fun. Um, you gotta just sort of think about how things are touching each other uh, in different ways. And what it means to be connected and uh, across time and space. Okay, uh, that's it for now. I'll be back later. I hope you enjoy, you have a good day and uh, stay safe everyone.